couple of months ago. So what do you think's changed? Well, most nations there had trouble with the ball. And that's not an excuse, that's a fact. I think FIFA made a huge error of judgment allowing that ball you know, to be used in the World Cup. And players of lesser technical ability found it more difficult to master it than others. So unfortunately, England came into that category. Um, Wayne Rooney is not a player with little technical ability. No, but I think there were obviously other things on Wayne Rooney's mind that we weren't aware of at the time, which uh, was a problem for him. Um, as we look at the goal now, I think what was interesting was that on a couple of occasions we got into that position. On the, this is good movement from Walker. He, he tries to lose his man, Ziegler, by looking in behind and coming to feet. Good strength to hold off the, uh, the Swiss player. And then it's a reckless challenge from Ziegler. Makes it easy for Johnson. But what, what is pleasing is that he doesn't actually thrash the ball into the box. Whether that was something they worked on in training or whether it was due to the fact that we had four small forwards, he kind of just stroked the ball in, nicely measured, good vision. It was also pleasing that when he put it in there, we had Walcott, Defoe, Rooney and uh, Milner, four players in the box, which is always pleasing for any, any manager. So that's the improvement. Maybe, Trevor, they've got more energy. Could it be as simple as the fact they're actually fitter now than they were in South Africa? Um, well, any uh, England team that go into a, a championship at the end of a, a long season, obviously they're not going to be in peak condition. But I would also contribute you know, the fact that they weren't at their fittest down to the altitude. That certainly played a part. There's no altitude in, in Basel. The conditions were absolutely perfect. It was like a, you know, a, a September day in England with the rain coming down. Um, but, but overall, I think what was pleasing was the fact that players were actually playing with a smile on their face. You know, some of the stories we were hearing that were coming out of the camp, you know, it wasn't a happy camp. And you know, if, if you're not happy in yourself off the field, then it's very hard then you know, to express yourself on the field. And that was very evident with many of the England players. I have to say that some of the England players that we saw in what was a debacle, you know, the, the way they performed, they were unrecognisable compared to what we saw last night. We've got to take the opposition into consideration. You know, I don't want to play it down because it was a, you know, a very accomplished English performance. But Switzerland have really deteriorated you know, from the days when you know, Hitzfeld took over. They had that you know, opening victory against Spain. And after that, they, they went downhill slowly. And that was a poor performance last night. But take nothing away from England. All over the field, we were very good. Prior to the game, I was slightly concerned with the back four. It was a makeshift central defensive partnership. But in all honesty, they had very little to do. Um, England had a little bit of fortune as well in the fact that Switzerland were reduced to 10 men. First yellow card for Lichtensteiner for descent. Well, he's complaining that the ball you know, didn't go out of play when he crossed it. Now, whether it went out of play or not, you know, the, the descent... You know, Does he have right to complain here, Trevor? Well, I think that was <laughs> uh, a reckless challenge, that uh, he didn't get the ball, and the referee, the Italian referee, uh, was quite right to uh, send him off. It's a better angle when we see it from behind, actually. Milner seems to delay his run a little bit, it's almost as if he's buying the challenge. Well, Milner's doing the right thing, isn't he? he he's cute, you know, he's, he's learning the game very quickly for one that's so young. He saw the defender coming over, just nicked it away from him, invited the challenge, and the fullback wasn't good enough to get the ball. So we've got a right footer on the left, we've got a left footer in Adam Johnson who comes on on the right hand side and scores the second time in two competitive appearances for England. Is this guy just looking natural in an England shirt, Trevor? Well, he's done very well in a short space of time, but um, there's a lot to admire in this goal. Actually, I like the, the way that Steven Gerrard immediately sees that there's something in it for him. As Wayne Rooney takes possession, look at Gerrard now. There he is, out the picture, starts running. He can see there's something on here. Plays a lovely ball. He's got a, he's got a picture of what's in front of him immediately. I mean, the left-back, Ziegler, who was reckless on the challenge for the first goal, stands up there and makes it easy for... Uh, for Johnson, but I like the way he takes it. You know, he drops his shoulder, stays calm, you know, nice and cool under pressure. Made it look rather easy for one who's still very young and learning the game. Still young, learning his game, playing at Manchester City on the right. When he was at Watford, Malky, you were a coach with him then. He was always a left sided player. Did you see him making this kind of progress though? Um, it was something that was very exciting when he was at Watford. Um, he was clever then, intelligent. Um, he would come in 
Um, he played in the right over at Middlesbrough when he went back to Middlesbrough, but for us, uh, played in the left, scored five goals um, and set up six or seven in the, the small period he was with us, the three months he was with us. His impact at our club was, was phenomenal. Um, and he's a very grounded boy, um, and I, I'm still in contact with him, and I'm delighted. I mean, obviously for a uh, Theo Walcott, not great that after such a spot, short space of time he's off the pitch last night, but great to see Adam getting so long in the pitch last night and, and um, fulfilling what I know he can he can do. As for what I understand, uh, Brian Marwood recommended him to uh, Roberto Mancini. And if you remember, Brian was an excellent winger himself, and when you see him perform, and as he has done in such a short space mm. of time at Man City, I think that some of the other big managers, or the, well, the big clubs, I should say, are probably looking at the situation yeah. now and thinking, why didn't we do this? Because he's got such great talent. Yeah, he's a special player. You know, as I say, I think he, he can go in. He's one of the ones that can go into Man City and among those superstars and make a huge impact in the next year or two. Sunderland couldn't buy him. They tried to. Couldn't compete with Manchester City's muscle, but they do have Darren Bent, who became the first Sunderland player for 56 years to score in an England shirt. How about that, Trevor? Well, I don't know how these boys are when they manage, but you know, when I managed, you, you got to know the players you thought could score and the ones you didn't think could score. <laughs> and the moment that ball was played to Darren Bent, I said goal immediately. Why? Because Darren Bent, to me, is a bit like Jermaine Defoe, natural goal scorers. He makes this look easy, knew exactly what he wanted to do, gets his head down, drills the ball past the keeper, and it's a good finish. You know, some said, oh, it was an easy finish. Well, there's a lot of players in that situation there would have blasted that over the crossbar or even put it wide. But Darren Bent, he expected to score there. His first shot on target, according to Opta, uh, in seven appearances for England, and he gets his first goal as well. Uh, Joe Hart, um, it looks like everything's been so easy for him, Trevor, since he's come into an England shirt. Did he have a little bit of a wake-up call last night? Well, there were one or two little errors that he made in a two or three-minute spell that he got away with. Other keepers that we've uh, had in the England side in recent times haven't been so lucky. Joe, he deserves to be in the team. I was absolutely staggered that he wasn't our number one. Having watched him often last season uh, for Birmingham City, he was outstanding for Birmingham. And for me, it was a no-brainer that he had to be our number one. He should have been in the England side in the three warm-up games prior to the World Cup. I know there was the talk about, well, you know, he's, he's probably you know lacking in experience. This is a guy who's oozing with confidence, border on arrogance, he's a top keeper and, and from you know being number three in the World Cup all of a sudden now they're talking about him being in the England goal for the next ten years it's amazing how things change about, he should have been on, on, on number one in the opening game against the USA. It looks healthy at fullback as well for England with Glenn Johnson bombing down the right and Ashley Cole down the left. Steve uh, you were a wonderful fullback yourself in your, in your day and as an international manager um, is this now a facet of, of modern international football, attacking fullbacks? How much of a weapon is it? I think fullbacks have always played a major role in international football. They've got to be, uh, they've got to have good delivery, be able to see a pass. I just wish I had some of their pace. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it, it's, it's a big bonus to any team to have fullbacks that can attack with the quality England have got. It certainly helps, doesn't it, Trevor? Real well, asset going Well, forward. I think all over the field you have partnerships. You know, we often talk about the central defensive partnership or the, the front two as strikers, but it's no different on the left-hand side. It's no coincidence that Ashley Cole is playing some of the best football of his career for England, and I think it's mainly down to the fact that he's got Milner in front of him. Now, Milner is an absolute dream, you know, to play behind because... He is constantly, you know, working, foraging up and down. And Cole knows that if he goes forward and he loses possession, he's not going to have, should I say, a typical winger who thinks, well, I'm not going to go back and do the covering. Milner last night, on two or three occasions, was back defending in a left-back position. He's a terrific player, t terrific team player, Milner. I think, I think also there, with Milner playing on the left and being right-footed, him coming inside, it's encouraging your full-back to go. And if you've got possession of the ball... So that's the future you know, as well, is it? Inverted wingers, people well, playing with the wrong foot on either side? Well, not necessarily. If, if Adam Johnson come over there, nine times out of ten, he, he'll probably go to the byline. But every now and again, he would come inside there as well. It's not the pass was perfection, as was the run. Here's Darren Bent. He's made a good start to the season with Sunderland. Something here for him, Darren Bent. He's still looking to open his England account.